Alright guys, I have the chance to do a small interview with the one half of London's underground label like uh, Dread Collective, Mr. Neil Porden. Welcome to the show, mate. So, uh, Dread Collective uh, returns with an amazing uh, Ray Footwork Jungle uh, based compilation featuring the marvelous number of uh, 48 tracks. I can't remember at the moment, uh, moment uh, any similar uh, new school album with uh, so many tracks. How did that come from? Just a simple progression for us. It's very different to the previous volumes, but I think in a very good way, definitely. We both believe it represents just what it is in terms of the music and to release and the general vibes of our label. I mean, the amount of tracks itself are purely down to response and juices. Like, we don't expect that many tracks whatsoever. We <laughs> literally just get growing each day. I mean, I thought we'd have about 30 tops, but yeah, it came out to 48, so that's really. Each one of uh, the Dread Collective uh, releases is of course unique and focused mainly on uh, footwork and uh, juke. Uh, this time on volume 3 album uh, can be found too many hardcore breaks tunes. Uh, which is pretty attractive, I gotta say. Uh, what's your opinion about the uh, new school hardcore break scene uh, at the moment? Well, the fact that we found it more difficult to find producers making breaks um, kind of shows how the scene is at the moment. There is a following, obviously, but it's, well, it's nowhere near as big as it should be. But, um, yeah, I mean, with Jungle making a comeback itself, breaks should hopefully follow with that. That's essentially the reason why we took it upon ourselves to feature these tracks and hopefully become part of bringing it back to a new audience. Alright, Neil, now tell me please uh, which producers uh, do you rate these days and uh, which ones uh, may interest you to sign them? I'll um, kind of just take as it goes when it comes to finding producers, really. I mean, we're set so far for the next five releases, so I'll kind of continue finding the people as we go. It's not about people being good already as such, but kind of realising the potential and what people are capable of, which is you know, that part of what we do. And we scope our talent and we don't base our label on people who have already made it. Okay, let's talk about something uh, hard at the moment. Uh, footwork as a general. How do you see its progress and uh, what's your prediction of uh, its future? Ooh, um, yeah, that's a tough question really. I mean, obviously the guy is over at Top Life at one point and bring the footwork out and more to a bigger audience. Um, but when it comes to hybrid footwork that like we love ourselves, it's different. I mean, yes, the response to the tracks, especially Machine Girls albums in the past, have been really good. Because it is such a niche and it is right in your face and you can't escape from that. I mean, we'll just have to see how it goes when we put it out on future events. That's when we'll know for sure how it's doing. We'll either get people walking away or going crazy for it, I think. I mean, hopefully that, because it does deserve the response that we think it does. I mean, so we'll just have to see it really. And uh, what about the Dread Collective plans for the future? Any forthcoming releases on the pipeline? Um, in terms of future plans, like this year especially, like, we're hoping to build on a couple of events, like, they'll most likely be coming. Yeah, so yeah, that's all really exciting. 
Well, it's definitely obvious that uh, you and Rob have been doing a really class work on uh, Dread Collective and uh, wish you guys to remain concentrated and devoted to this kind of work. Big up, Neil. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, tonight's uh, interview on Generation X Radio Show. Wanna send any shout out to anyone uh, listening or anything extra you would like to mention? Uh, yeah, like, first of all, to yourself, my